I'm gonna show you three really easy ways to make your vocals pop in any production. Doesn't matter what genre of music you like to produce or make, these three techniques are gonna help you out. And probably the best thing about this is that every single one of these methods is free, so no paid plugins to go out and buy. Now essentially, all three of these methods are doing the same thing, but there's three different ways to accomplish the effect, so hopefully one of those methods is gonna come easier to you than the others. So here's an in-progress song where I need the vocals to pop out just a little bit more. You say I might have been wrong, well so what, it's been too long. I've come to realize there's not a single feeling there. As you can see on the virtual mix rack here, all I have is the selected mic. I do have an EQ, but it's turned off. And then I have a little bit of serial compression. The first thing I notice in that vocal is how muddy it sounds, which brings us to the first method, and that's adding EQ. Now, regardless of what method you choose, you should have an EQ on your vocal, at least with a high pass filter to get out that low end. My high pass usually sits best right around 100 hertz. You say I might have been wrong, well so what, it's been too long. And if I solo this out, you can hear the rumbleness I just took away. You say I might have been wrong, well so what, all that will add up and just make it even more muddy, so it's good that we take that out. Now the next thing we want to do with the EQ is go take out some of that muddiness in the low end. So if you have an EQ that can solo out bands, this is the time where we want to go utilize a sweep so we can go find where that muddiness is. You say I might have been wrong, well so what, it's been too long, I've come to realize so right around 350. So let's cut that some, doesn't need to be that large. You say I might have been been too long. And now the next thing we wanna do is go boost some of the high end where we hear some clarity that usually sits anywhere from four to 6,000 hertz. Let's do the same thing, solo out and go sweep and find where that is in my voice. You say I might have been wrong, well so what's been too long. I've come to realize there's not a single Actually, right around 2,500 hertz is where I'm hearing a lot of clarity. I've come to realize there's not a single feeling there. I've been invisible while you... Another thing we can do instead of using the bow curve is go throw a high shelf on there. You say I might have been wrong, well so what, it's been too long. Last thing to note on the EQ is you should really have the EQ before you do any type of compression. Let's go move this before those compressors. So even with these next two methods, I'm gonna wanna keep that high pass filter on here. Usually if I did any kind of corrective EQ where I did some cuts, I would also leave that on here. But for the sake of showing you, I'm only gonna keep the high pass filter on there. All right, now method number two is just to add saturation and there's a great Great free saturation plug called saturation knob I'll leave a link down below completely free it's great on a lot of things not just vocals so what we're gonna want to do is we're gonna put this to keep high and then just increase the saturation until the vocals cutting through where we want but the thing we want to be careful about is how much distortion because we also add a little bit of distortion in there you say I might have been wrong well so what it's been too long I've come to realize there's not a single feeling there That already makes it cut through a lot You say I might have been wrong, well so what, it's been too long I've come to realize there's not a single feeling there I can still hear some of that boxiness, so I definitely want to go into the EQ and take that out. Now the last method and the one I do use the most is utilizing the Fresh Air plugin. This is also a free plugin by Slate Digital and it is absolutely incredible. I use it on almost every single vocal production I do. Here we get a little bit more control over where that saturation or where that exciter is hitting. We get the mid range and we get a little bit of that crispiness, that high end. You say I might have been wrong, well so what, it's been too long. I've come to realize there's not a single feeling there. You say I might have been wrong, well so what, it's been too long. I've come to realize there's not a single feeling there. Now what I usually do on my vocal productions is a mix of the two. I'll go throw the EQ on, I'll put a high pass filter, I'll dip out some of the muddiness and I'll boost a little bit of the high slash mid range. And then at the very end of my vocal chain, I'll have fresh air on there to really get it to cut through. Add reverb and delay, and that's usually what you're gonna hear on my vocal productions. You say I might have been wrong, well so what, it's been too long. I've come to realize there's not a single feeling there. As with any technique, especially with vocal production techniques, you wanna use these sparingly. If you add too much of either of these effects, you can take away the light from the vocal and get it sounding really, really thin, and it'll just completely lose all of its presence. So. Be careful with how much you add, but I hope it helped. I'll put a link below with all of the plugins here that we talked about because they're all free. Why not go check them out? And if you'd like to see another video on some pretty cool vocal protection techniques on getting your voice to sound huge, you can check out a video here. But until next time, I'm Phil, keep creating music.